Uh, hey, much love and respect to everybody that's tuned in. Thank you once again for being here. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Just want to go ahead and finish up this book we was reading. Great topic here. The book uh, that we're reading is Ireland or of the Chaldees. We've read, um, you know, many chapters of this uh, book. Gonna- yeah, so I wanted to share this. I thought this book was interesting, uh, even though they call it a fictional story. It's called the Islands of Chaldea, right? Chaldea. Chaldea is in Ireland, right? Or the British Isles, Babylon, Shinars in Europe. Remember the previous chapters? And this is by uh, Diana Wine Jones, the Islands of Chaldea. This is the islands. And it looks like the British Islands, right? Just a little backwards, like England on this side. And let me just show you what I'm talking about. So you see what I'm saying? So this long side on this side, instead on this side. And it just split apart a little bit. Let's go back. Just split apart a little bit right here. But as you see, it goes all the way down with the hook. Look it down. And then the little island on the side. This is, this is the island on the side. But to me, it looks just like the British Isles. And it's not talking about the Middle East in this book. All right. Again, looks like a lot like the British Isles. In the book, Ireland, Ur of the Chaldees, and chapter 13, Heber, chapter 13, right? We know, biblically, that's one of the uh, progenitors, they say, of the uh, Hebrews, right? Known both in the Hebrew, Islamic uh, traditions, and uh, other traditions all over the world. It says here, the Irish records and traditions agree that Heber, came from Iberia, and that the south of Ireland was his portion. All right, they're saying that Heber came from Spain and Portugal, Iberia, you know, that area, the Mediterranean. It says here, Heber took the south of Erie. The order was so agreed on with his activity, with his power, with his harmony, with his victims, with his grandeur, with his hospitality, with his vivacity, combined with hardiness, with his loveliness and its purity. So Nenius gives it, Heber is described as a crowned horseman. This Heber, or another one of the name, was the precursor of tribes of Arads or Arabs. All right? You see that? Different letters. D or B. The D is used for B in many of the old Irish manuscripts. All right? Arabs, as well as in modern Irish books. Nenius, page 257, speaks on corporate Arad. A red tire, a red shellac. Again, in the same book, these tribes are called Kerfi Arad, Arad Tiri, Arad Kliak. O'Donovan describes them as the tribes settled in Duhara in Tipperary. Ninius, page 569, says the descendants of Eber are Egonauts in every place. Interesting words, Ego, Egonauts. It almost sounds like Huguenots. Hmm. 
and at anti-lock line, Cassell, Glenda Marin, and Ross are guide. A kind of raffling without oppression, magnificent their apparel. It says here, in the days of the sons of Heber, right? On the sons of Heber, biblically, right? They're Joktan and Pelik, just like it says here. Joktan, Jukatan, Joktan, and Pelik. There was a division of the earth. That is to say, countries were apportioned them, right? So you know, biblically, it says that in the days of Pelik, the earth was divided. Right, we can take that physically, symbolically, or as they're saying here, is when is um, the countries were apportioned them. Pelic is believed by some to be Pelasgus, and therefore that Greece was settled in by his people. Pelic is in the Bible sometimes called Falek. All right, Joktan took a tribe into Arabia, the Arab Al Ariba, the genuine Arab, the genuine Arab, the Arab Al Ariba. All right, Joktan, the genuine Arab, claimed to be a son of Joktan. He claimed to be a son of Joktan, the son of Hebrew. He prides himself upon being a purer blood than the Ishmaelite Arab. Purer blood than the Ishmaelites, right? Because that's what they're saying that all the Arabs come from. But they're saying there's actually one that's more pure of way before. That's the son of Joktan, a son of Hebrew, a grandson. All right, Ishmaelites are son of Uh, you know, basically of Ishmael, a son of Abraham, biblically. Daniel says, to the Arabs, generally Heber is known as Hud, and they narrate many Celtic traditions and superstitions, all right? They have Celtic traditions and superstitions, they're saying, the Arabs. We give a few of them. There was an old Gaul, a common belief among the people, that if witches tied knots in a court and breathed upon them, uttering at the same time words of mystery. They would reduce the mind and body of the person they wish to injure. In France, in the present day, there is a relic of this superstition called Noir Egelet. It is referred to in the Quran. All right, they also have this in the Quran. Remember, this is an old Gaelic uh, legend. In the name of the most merciful God, say I fly for refuge unto the Lord of the daybreak, that he may deliver me from the mischief of those things which he has created. And from the mischief of the night when it cometh on. And from the mischief of women blowing on nuts. All right? Women blowing on nuts. Just like the old gal, all right? Tradition of witches tied nuts in a cord and breathed upon them. It's the same thing they're showing you. The followers of the prophet, according to Savory, have an implicit faith in the words contained in these two chapters. They consider them as sovereign specific against magic, lunar influences, and the temptations of the evil spirit. They never fail to repeat them evening and morning. There is another Arabic tradition reflecting upon an Irish one. It is about the birds of Ras Della in the Quran Al Ras. We give Mr. Salis notes upon it. The commentators are at a loss where to place Al-Ras. According to one opinion, it was the name of a well, as the word signifies near Midian, about which some idolaters having fixed their habitations, the prophet Shoaib was sent to preach to them. But they not believing on him, the well fell in and they and their houses were all swallowed up. Another supposes it to have been a town, Jamama, where a remnant of the Tamudites settled to whom a prophet was also sent. But they slain him were utterly destroyed. Another thinks it was a well near Antioch, where Habib al Najjar, whose tomb is still to be seen there, being frequently visited by the Mahamedans, was martyred. And a fourth takes Al Ras to be a well in Hadramant, by which dwelt some idolatrous Tamudites, whose prophet was Hanha or Kantala, for I find the name written both ways. Ibn Safwan. These people were first annoyed by certain monstrous birds called Anka, 
which lodged in the mountain above them and used to snatch away their children, large birds, huh? When they wanted other prey. But this calamity was so far from humbling them that on their prophets calling it down a judgment upon them, they killed him and were all destroyed. This is in the Quran entitled Al Furqan, revealed at Mecca. Now let us see how the Irish tale resembles this. Then we will conclude that inasmuch as the commentators could not find Al Ras in the East, it is beyond any doubt the Ras Della of Ireland. All right, that's where it is. The Ras Della of Ireland is Al Ras. From the Irish version of Nennius, published by the Irish Archaeological Society, we take the following account in connection with Ras Della of one of the wonders of Eri. It is according to the book of Leinster or Glenda Loca. A belfry of fire, which was seen at Rosdella during the space of nine hours, and blackbirds without number, coming out and going into it. One great bird was among them, and the smaller birds used to nestle in his feathers when they went into the belfry. And they all came out together, and they took up dogs with them in their talons, and they let them drop down to earth, and they died. The birds flew away from the place afterwards, and the wood upon which they perched bent under them to the ground. And the oak upon which the said great bird perched was carried by him by the roots out of the earth, and where they went to it not known. Rosdella, the place where the miraculous tower of fire was seen, is very little altered in, in name. It is now Rosdala, a townland in the parish of Duro, near Kilbegan, county of Westmeath. The four masters in the year 1054 described the phenomenon, a belfry of fire seen in the air over Ras Diala on the Sunday of the feast of St. Gurgi or George. For five hours, black birds innumerable passing into and out of, and one large bird in the middle of them, right? So large birds, just like the Quran people were saying, and the little birds went under his wings when they went into the belfry. About 20 times the saying, remember Ad and Tamud, and those who dwelt at Al Ras, is repeated in the Quran. The wood near Madian, the cities and lofty castles that were overthrown, and many other particular allusions in the same book point to Ireland as the country in which was Al Ras. All right, you hear what they're telling you that those, those parts in the Quran they're talking about. This ancient time in Ireland and in Ireland as a place. We will leave it to the reader to decide for himself whether it was in Ireland. It is to our mind impossible to disbelieve the Semitic affinity of the early self, which the above goes to prove. It is beyond question that the Arab knows Heber as Hud, and worthy of notice that the country of Eboricum, Eboricum, remember that, Eboriqua, Eboricum, Yorkshire is thought to have taken this later name from Joktan. There is Jauk mentioned in the Quran and by some believed to be no other than Joktan, the leader of the Arab al-Arab. Joktan, the leader of the Arab al-Arab. We have said another name of Hebrew was Hud. This name remains plentifully enough in the British islands, especially in Yorkshire. Now listen to this. The Quran people, the Islamic and Muslim, they call Hebrew Hud. Now look at these words in the British Islands. Hudswell, right? Hud, Hudswell, Huddersfield, Hutnell, Huddington, Huddleston are places in Yorkshire. And the family name Hudson is not only found there by the hundred, but in most parts of England. There are many also of the name Huddleston. In the Irish calendar of saints, there is a Mochude, which appears to have kindred resemblances to the original Hood. There is beside a Makod, Latinized Mock Good, referred to in the additional notes to the Irish Ninius, page 3. But the explanation of it is peculiar. Manchester and Warwickshire, or Manchester, in the Irish legendary accounts of Heber, there is a much that may be regarded as genuine history. There is much. A great deal of Keating's history of Ireland remains indisputably true, while other parts of it may be questioned and some things altogether disbelieved. 
But although we have not endeavored to show much to prove the identity of the Hebrew of Genesis and the Irish Hebrew, still we cannot but think that it is quite possible they may have been the same person. Some accounts state that the Irish Hebrew is said to have reigned B.C. 2007, 37, while others about 1,000 years before, and the Hebrew of Genesis somewhere near B.C. 2260. At any rate, we are told that his son Peleg was born in 2247 B.C., when his father was 34 years of age. All right, so we got to dodge the hijack with their chronologies, remember? We're going to have a future video about this. We're going to question their chronologies, all right? In 1883, before the Christian era, the Pelasgi are said to have entered the Peloponnesus and inhabited Argolus. It has been argued of late and with some show of reason that Peleg settled in Greece and that he was no other than Pelasgus. It is strange fact that some Irish accounts say the Grecians were called in Old Irish Goet Hill Gael. We have not ourselves seen this anywhere but in Keating. But it is true, it goes to strengthen our opinion that the Greeks and their tongue were descended from the Gaelic family and language of Hebrew. After taking of the attempt of Nimrod to erect the Tower of Babel after talking, Sorry, and the consequent confusion of speech. Keaton says, but the wisdom of God thought fit to preserve the genuine and original language, which was the Hebrew in the family of Heber, from whom it was called the Hebrew tongue. All right. His language was not confused as the legend goes. Heber, his family separated from the building of the Tower of Babel. So his family's language was not conf confused or lost he got to keep the original language as they call it so-called hebrew all right whatever you want to call it canaanite phoenician it's the same one and for opposing the designs of nimrod he furthermore relates the faithful hebrew for his piety was rewarded with continuance of the original speech and his own family who preserved it uncorrupt and in its native purity delivered it to the posterity Bearing in mind the comparatively small period of time between the two Hebrews, according to one of the citations already quoted, and the difference may be accounted for by inexactness of the chroniclers of the Druid and the Jew, there is not much to decide us against believing that both Hebrews are identical. The land of Heber and the Hebrew, where it is it, if not in Western Europe? The Hebrews, of course, had possessions in the East. But the signs of them remaining there are few indeed as compared to those appealing to us for recognition in the west of the two continents. And that's a lot closer to America, right? In the next part of this series, just want to remind everybody that um, even in the Bible, there was a couple of Hebrews. As it says here, the name of Heber, there are four Hebrews in the Bible. It says there's a son of Beriah, son of Asher, son of Jacob which, with Silpha. The progeny of the Heber became known as the Heberites. Heberites, Numbers 26, 45. It says here, Kenite, descendant of the cousin of Moses and husband of Jael, who killed Sisera. In Judges 4, 24, a descendant of Judah. 1 Chronicles 4, 18. All right. A Benjaminite. 1 Chronicles 8, 17. All right. So I know we're reading about Heber and Heber. In, um, in Irish legends, as we're going to read right now, it says here, the Encyclopedia of Celtic Mythology and Folklore by Patrician Monaghan. All right. Go real quick to a part right here. It says Eber. It says Irish hero. In the Book of Invasion, several characters bear this name, which may be derived from the similarly named Eber, Heber. In the biblical book of Genesis, the most important was Eber, Finn, chief of the Milesians, and son of the eponymous Mill de Spain, Mill of Spain of the Spanish soldier. After his people's defeat of the magical race, the Tuata de Danan, or the tribe of Danan, Dan, Eber was granted the southern half of the country, while his brother Eremon was awarded the north. Eber, unhappy with the division and believing his portion to be smaller than Eremon's, mounted an unsuccessful war in which he was killed. 
Another character of this name, Eber Dunn, was Eber Finn's envious older brother. He played by the small role in Irish myth and was often conflated with the king of death, Don. Right. Many different connections with the Celtic and the Hebrew, as we read in the previous chapters. A lot of websites talking about, as you hear, see here, Hebrew Celtic connection. Uh, another one here, early Hebraic practices of the Celtics people. It was a good little article. Again, you know, we're going to get into all that stuff, the origin of the pigs and gals. Again, see the previous chapters of the book. Just want to show you guys what we've already gone over in chapter one, the extent of Chaldea, its situation not in the east. Chapter two, remarks on the sons of Noah and their tongues. Chapter three, Shinar is Europe, all right? Summer, Shinar. All right, Chaldea is in Western Europe. References to the religion of the Chaldees. The word Kalne and Chaldea, Kalnia, Chaldea, Caledonians. All right, chapter 5, Ur of the Chaldees, reference to Ireland as Ur. Right, Ur is in Ireland. Chapter 6, the cross of Chaldea symbol. Chapter 7, the sons of Noah and their descendants. All right, and it goes through chapter 8, the sons of Ham and his descendants in Western Europe. Prophecy against the Isles and retrospect of Habakkuk. Again, we've read all these chapters, all right? Cush and Nimrod. Chapter 10, Kuchites and Hyperboreans. Chapter 11, the sons of Shem. Chapter 12, Salah. And of course, chapter 13, what we read today, Hebrew. All right. So I hope you liked, uh, enjoyed the video again. Just want to read that uh, chapter real quick. Again, not a, not a long video. Just wanted to get that out the way so we can continue with the next parts. We'll come with a lot more videos, a lot more topics. Stay tuned. Wow.